Hey, I'm Joe Pierce, and welcome to my, not my shop, my studio area. I've got a second channel now where I'm doing music videos, and uh, this is where I've been recording them. It's where I've got all my music stuff, and I'm kind of wanting to spruce this area up. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this, all the shelves and stuff, and I'm going to make it look a lot nicer. I'm going to put my desk over here. Um, anyway, today I'm going to show you how to make these guitar hangers that look like the headstock of the guitar that hangs there. So check it out. All right, so let's try this voiceover thing. So in order to make a headstock shaped guitar hanger, first I'm taking a photo of the headstock and then I'm taking measurements of the headstock. Uh, so on my iPad, I pull up the photo that I took and the iPad's just got a big enough screen to do this. Uh, if you don't have an iPad, I'm sure there's some other way you can do this, but it's it's better than just going by eye, for me anyway, because I can't really draw. So anyway, I adjust the photo to where it's the same size as the headstock, and then I trace it out with a pencil, and then I double check my measurements, <clears throat> and then I cut out the shape, obviously. So now I want to transfer the shape over to a piece of wood. Uh, this is a piece of cherry. Uh, I tried it with a pencil first and I couldn't really see it, so I'm doing it again with a marker. Um, now for the fun part, we're going to cut this out on the bandsaw. This is a pretty simple project. You know, all you really need is a bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could do this with like a coping saw or a scroll saw or even a jigsaw. Or if you have time, you could whittle it with a knife, I'm sure. Have I mentioned how terrible my bandsaw is? My bandsaw is um, probably 40 years old, um, and I don't really know how to make it a super nice one. I just kind of make do with what I got. I put a I put a good blade on it. That's that's that made a world of difference. But there's a lot of adjustments that I think you can make on newer bandsaws that you can't make on this one. But make do with what you have, you know. Don't let your equipment stop you from making something that you want. Okay, so now I've got the uh, the belt sander here, and I'm just cleaning up all the edges. Um, <clears throat> you know, with the bandsaw, it doesn't leave the best cut in the world, uh, so I stay a little bit away from my line, and I use the um, sander to get down to the line. Uh, it doesn't get into all the little nooks and crannies, but it gets most of the most of the hard part out of the way. When you have the cheap sander, you have to make a lot of adjustments while you're sanding. But hey, like I said, make do with what you got. You don't have to have the nicest thing in the world. So I also like to take uh, just like a piece of a dowel rod or something and stick it in my drill press and wrap some adhesive back sandpaper around that a couple of times and it turns it into like a makeshift drum sander. And you see here I've also taken that same piece of dowel and wrapped the self-adhesive sandpaper around it. I'm going through the grits to clean up the edges. Uh, the hand sanding gets you the best finish. Uh, when you use the makeshift drum sander or the other one, it, it leaves, leaves kind of a rough finish. So go over it with this and make everything nice and smooth.
Don't you wish you could work this fast in real life? Okay, so now I'm drilling out a hole for the actual hook to screw into. The hooks that I use are just the cheap little hooks that you get at any store. You know, they're, they're meant for your garage to hang shovels on or something, but they work great for guitar hangers. I'm also drilling out and uh, countersinking for the, the screws that are going to attach to the wall. A little bit of foul sanding here. So uh, so there's the hook. That one is just a bare metal one because I was experimenting with uh, coating them myself. They come with a rubber coating on them, but I wanted to modify the hook a little bit. Uh, I wanted to bend it to where it was a little bit narrower, um, and I tore up the, the coating. So I did coat these with uh, Plasti Dip, did a couple coats of that, and uh, they worked pretty well. But if you can do it with the coating that's already on there, you're probably better off. <clears throat> I'm finishing this with True Oil. Um, I like this stuff. It's really easy to put on, and you do a couple of coats, and it's nice and shiny. You can see on the other end of the bench there one of the other hangers that I made to match my um, one of my other guitars, and that guitar is red, and it's made out of uh, flame maple, so I used flame maple, and I dyed it red. You can see how I do this in my one of my videos a couple back, uh, where I dyed wood using a Lumilite dye, a dye that's meant for... Um, resin uh, so now I'm just screw it to the wall I got some there's just three inch deck screws and I'm screwing into the stud you can see I'm doing pull-ups on the thing and it's plenty strong <clears throat> so uh, so yeah there they are and they um, are great now let's hear from Joe so thanks for watching I love these things I've got more guitars to make more of um, and once I clean this area out, I'm going to have another space for another one to the, to the left, and then space for a couple more to the right. And then I need to make something to cover up that ugly power box. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And make sure that you check out Rob over at Make Things, and ask him why it's important to read the description. Have a good one.